Hi, I'm Tony. This is Slack. Welcome to Smog Vlog. Today we're going to be reviewing the Smoke R200. <laughs> Even said it right. Right, so as we said, we're going to be reviewing the Smoke R200. Now, there's going to be a few things in the video that might be a bit timey, so we're going to do some button pushes, hopefully. We're going to do some firmware updates, hopefully. And if there are, and you don't want to watch them, use the notes section below uh, to just skip to the next chapter. Otherwise, you know, this review will probably go on a while, because, you know, apparently we're not very quick. Right, without further ado, Tony's going to unbox the sucker for your viewing pleasure. Here we are with the unboxing for the Smok R200. Quick tour around the box, nothing top and bottom. On the side we've got the uh, standard Smok uh, BEC app download QR code bullshit thing. I don't know. Something to do with mobile phones. Slack's favourite scratch and sniff thingamajig. There we go. Looking at the back of the box the whole wordy stuff about, you know, giving up smoking, um, and some quick tech specs which we'll be throwing up probably after this. On this side of the box it gives us what the kit includes, including the, the mod, user manual, uh, customer card, presumably warranty card, I don't know. Upgrading cable because this, although it's fitted with a USB port, is not for charging because it's dual 18650 replaceable batteries, so you want to be sticking those in a charger yourself. The other thing is the uh, battery safety. Oh, so just... This bit interests me because it comes with TFE4 mini backup kit. I'm pretty sure that when I ordered this, I only got the, um, the R200 by itself, but that is clearly, clearly showing us a dot on the tier 4 mini backup kit so like you I haven't got a clue what's in this box let's find out because I want to know if I've got a free tier 4 because that would be awesome if we can get in the box give me my stuff where are the scissors come on you bastard So close, I can taste it. Right. Oh my god, there we go. Right. Oh god, it's like Christmas all over again. Right, there we go, we're inside. And apparently, I got the white one. I do not remember getting the white one. Or do I? Did I get the white one? I've definitely got a white one. It's tasty snacks for slack. I'll um, be sure to take those around to him for him to enjoy later. Right, I don't remember the white thing. I might have got the wrong one here, but you know, it's different, so there we go. I just want to see if I've got that TFE4. Okay, rather confusingly, Smoke in their infinite wisdom has decided to include with the R200 kit. So here we can see it says the TFV4 mini backup kit, one replacement glass tube, one TFV4.3 dual Clapton, uh, one 1 1.8 Clapton single coil, and one improved design silicon sealing pad. Okay, so that's what that thing's called, a silicon sealing pad. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of all you get. You don't get a tank, you just get the coils and the mod and a replacement glass tube. That's a bit confusing. I don't get that. We'll have to go back to the studio to find out what I've or we have found out about this. But as it stands, if you're just buying this, you've then got to put more money out on an actual tank. I, I, <laughs> I think someone at fucking Smoke HQ is, 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 is smoking something they shouldn't be. It's like, I've got a fucking brilliant idea. Let's include a load of stuff that they can't actually use with the mod until 
they buy our tank as well. So we're, we're kind of locking them in there. Um, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, like we said, 1.8, uh, 0 0.3, one's a single claps and one's a dual claps and they've, you've got your spare glass tank there. I'm wondering, is that the, yeah, that is the short size replacement glass tank. That's not even the um, larger extended gla glass size tank to give you more juice. So um, <laughs> this is all shades of, I haven't got a fucking clue. USB cable, is that more tasty treats? That is more tasty treats of Slack. He is going to be putting on weight when I give him these later, but he's going to love me for it. Right, there is your improved seal silicon pad thing that goes on the top of the TFV4 that we do not have in the kit because that makes sense, Smock. That really makes sense. Right, there's that card thing that we saw on the listed on the outside of the box, which just basically gives you a breakdown of what's included and an introduction, which is Slack's favourite sales spiel for a product that we've already bought. One warranty card, um, which is yeah, how to use batteries and how not to stick your tongue on batteries. And um, Slack's ever favourite wordy thing, which tells us all about this. So let's try that to one side and move over to the good stuff. So yeah, like I said, I do not remember ordering the white one. That's not something I would normally do. Right, moving around the device. Your go button, plus and minus. Fairly small screen as usual. They've been using this type of cutout for screen since like the the M80. Uh, I think it's about time they, they improved that. Um, brought it into the 21st century. There's your, uh, yeah. That just pops straight off, which is not cool. That doesn't even really... Mm. Oh, it's magnetised. Yeah. Right, so the where, where it clips in, that's magnetised. There's your firmware upgrade, 510 connector, nothing on that side, and that will give you the cursory comparison with the old M80. This is fairly impressive considering you, you, you can house two 18650s in there. That is quite an impressive um, space saving design. Again, yeah. Similar to the um, the Smock Micro. In actual fact very bloody similar to the Smock Micro because this is all shades of the same. Yeah, they've just used exactly the same body, probably updated the top of it a bit. Right, there's the comparison between those two. We'll chuck a couple of batteries in and see what it decides to do. And plus and minus. Okay, so there's that way. You've got plus here, minus here, so plus minus <laughs> that is not a good design smoke yep straight into uh, normal temperature mode three clicks of the button yeah into the standard um, into the standard menu system just temp and wattage again I'm not going to go through this because slack has a has a real has a real way with these mods so that's our unboxing of the Smock R200. Probably back to the studio to find out how they're getting along. And here we are back in the room. Right, cheers Tony for those mad skills with the unboxing. Some say better than Slack. I'm not here to judge. <laughs> it's unboxing Slack versus unboxing Tony. That's a debate for a whole other day. Moving swiftly on, we're going to go with tech specs now. So the R200 is a 200 watt device that runs on dual 18650s. It can fire from 0.06 to 2 ohms in temp control mode and from 0.1 to 3 ohms in wattage mode. It does temp control on the big three, nickel, titanium and stainless and it has adjustable TCR. Arr. Yarr. <clears throat> Added pirate. 
Okay, cheers for the tech specs. It's voice over Slack. It's a lot of disembodied voices this episode. And now we're going to be moving on to another one. Button pushes. All right, let's touch this sucker up. It's your standard affair for five clicks to lock the device. When you're locked and you press to fire, it's going to tell you the date and time, or a date and time. Five clicks again to unlock it. Obviously, when you're in wattage mode, you up and down to adjust the wattage. When you're in temp control, you up and down to adjust your temperature. So we've got a couple of quick access menus. So plus and go will change between wattage and temp mode and minus and go will change your temp hit. Also pressing plus and minus together will lock the adjustment buttons still allowing you to fire. You want to get into your menu to change settings, three clicks and you go into the standard smoke menu. First option changes between wattage and temperature. Uh, we're in temperature. Next up you would set your coil type for the temperature control. Uh, we're using steel and it's a dual coil, not core. Next up in the menu is going to be your temp control adjustment. This is your sort of punch. Uh, I find for this one actually standard is fine. So next up for our menu items we've got screen time. Uh, there's our wonderful puff counter. Uh, here we can rotate the screen and in here all the way over to the side is your adjustable TCR. After TCR adjustment we can adjust our initial ohms. So the last couple of menu options you've got is the annoying clock where you can spend ages setting this, um, press and hold to get out and the last option is the power option where you can power off your device. The studio. Back to the studio. Okay, so we've seen the menu operation, and now let's talk about the button quality. So the three buttons, your go button and your plus and minus buttons, they're pretty much the same affair as you're going to get with the R80. So you might hear us talking a lot about the R80. These are very similar devices, and we've recently reviewed that as part of the Micro One kit. Yeah, the button quality on these is, is very nice. Probably of a better quality than the Micro One. Do you reckon? I think I prefer the Micro One. Really? On account it has a louder click, a more prominent click. This is... See, that's interesting because I found the, the Micro One had a bit of a hollow fleet feeling to it, whereas this feels a bit more solid. Yeah, it does feel more solid, but I prefer that loud, clunky click. And while the R80 wasn't a loud, clunky click, it was nearer to that than this is. This is stealthy. Horses for courses, your mileage may vary. Yeah, but what is true of both of them uh, is that the buttons work really well. There's, there's no firing issues, there's no half assed presses, it, it works. Yeah. Okay, for the menu operation of the device, as you would have seen in the Appy Closey, it's the standard smoke menu. Three clicks, you're in the menu and everything is there, you go straight to it. I like having a direct menu. I much prefer a menu button, but it's a small price to pay for three clicks, you know, it's only two extra clicks. So it's not world ending stuff. and. Yeah, that direct access menu is good. Moving on now to uh, firmware. The item does have a USB port on the bottom of it. Not for USB charging, just for firmware only. Um, yeah, as with a lot of smock stuff, they, they do invest in their devices and they, they will sort of roll out updates for their products. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, so let's dive down for a quick firmware update. Okay, here we are with the firmware upgrade for the R200. First of all, open up a web page and do a Google search for the Smock R200 and just type firmware in. I've tried navigating the actual Smock website. It's it's kind of difficult to find. I've just found it easier to to do a Google search for it and you click the top one and it takes you straight straight in. This pretty much gives you the guide straight away and how to do it in China's best version of English. Up here you'll see your download tools. You've got the ISP tool which is the um, app that will actually install the, the firmware and this is uh, the one underneath it is the actual firmware version. Underneath that, it's got your, your guide on how, how to do it. It looks pretty simple, just hold the minus key down, push connect, it will connect the device, come down a bit more, uh, load file, that will then tell you 
uh, to load the hex file which is is the firmware update effectively and then push push the start yeah push the start button and it will presumably flash flash your R200 for you so I've already downloaded both of these tools already but if you just click them you'll get a thing come up at the bottom of the screen saying do you want to save it I said yes again though as always it is at the user's discretion as to whether they do this or not um, I haven't bricked mine yet but let's find out if I do or not of course I won't it'll be fine it'll be fine first of all um, open up the zip tool and just drag drag your stuff out to the desktop I find that's easiest to work with right so I've just unloaded the ISP tool and the R200 if you open up the ISP folder you'll see the ISP tool there but we've got to have our R200 connected first so uh, with a micro USB I'm just going to plug it in now holding down the minus key on the mod and Windows should detect it and give us a, a little ping which it does. Now this is the second time I've done this, the first time Windows downloaded a driver for it so wait for it to install that driver first and um, you should be good to go. Again this is just telling us run at your own risk sort of thing. I've done it and haven't encountered any problems. If we push the connect button now it will say connected so that's connected to my device two bits of information before going forward I haven't got batteries loaded in my R200 we'll see if it works it should work I can't see why not it's being powered by the USB to the chip uh, secondly I'm doing this on Windows 7 64 bit I don't have a Mac I've never used a Mac and judging by the website they don't support Macs which sucks moving on now we go to the AP ROM button and load up our hex file because it's loaded uh, it's searching for bin files you've got to go on the down thing here and just say all files it'll be this hex one here that we're looking for and you just say open that up that will load the file up another thing to note is that I, I still have my finger on the minus uh, key here while doing all of this I don't know whether I'm supposed to or not uh, the the information on the website doesn't tell me one way or the other so for continuity's sake I'm just keeping it held down if it doesn't work then I'll try it without having it held down but I think you're supposed to hold it down next thing the guide says is uh, just make sure that the AP ROM is the only thing ticked down here or, or dotted so untick config and just make sure that's ticked and apparently go with start it will show you the status bar and it's done I've just released the minus key push disconnect Windows has told me that it's disconnected and after loading a couple of batteries in the R200 and booting it up on the the first boot screen it, it came up with version 0004 which is what we wanted so there we go that's pretty much the firmware update done for you probably back to the studio okay just quickly the 510 connector is the standard smoke 510 connector it, it's not world changing i've had a couple of issues where stuff doesn't quite want to go on as easy as it should do but it works pretty well uh, I, I have noticed that stuff doesn't want to tighten all the way down so there's no cup it's a flat plate of metal uh, and stuff doesn't go all the way down so it's not flush with the metal which is good and bad because you know there's a bit of air room there which could catch things uh, but it means that you're not going to scratch your mod up so you know it, it's not all bad next up for you guys is temperature control so like we said in the tech specs yes it, it does does do temperature control and it does the big three ti stainless steel and um nickel that guy the big three that we all know so well so well um yeah as well as doing temp control on those big three you've got adjustable tcr so the out of the box settings for temp control i found pretty good you know i didn't need to tweak any of these but if you've got some funky wire requirements you know or it's not how you like it you can really easy dive in and adjust that tcr so winner winner chicken dinner 
apparently chicken is a thing now. Yeah, why not? Right, while we're talking about temp control, I'm going to take a hit. This is the crown with the standard 0.25 ohm coil in it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a hit at 160 degrees and we'll see what we get. In terms of juice, it's got a chocolate sort of mix in there. I think it's probably about 80 20. 50 50. See, there's a nice warm vape, how I like it. You know, you've got some heat there, and that's turned right down. You can go all the way up to the full 315 or whatever it is, and it really, really is nice. Yeah, good range on okay, it. Okay, guys, now we're moving firmly into the realms of portability, size, and weight. Now, this unit is weighs virtually fuck all, really, if you haven't yeah. got any batteries in it. Yeah, I mean, it's like empty pack of fags sort of weight. There's <laughs> really nothing is. to it. Okay, so the body is is plastic. This this is obviously the reason why. In terms of relative size, it's um, not too much bigger than the R80, but obviously you're getting 200 watts as opposed to the R80's uh, 80 watts. But because it's sort of a similar sort of size, I think Slack will agree it fits nicely in the palm. Yeah, it fits nicely in the hand. You know, it, where it's lightweight as well, it really adds to the portability of it. The buttons are easy to find while it's in your hand. So, I mean, portability, size and weight are pretty good. Now let's talk about battery life. Um, it's a dual 18650, obviously. You should know that by this stage of the review. And so battery life is pretty good. Yeah, temp control isn't too efficient with batteries. I found that with all the smoke devices, they're a bit aggressive in their calculations, I get, or something's going on. Maybe that sort of pre-punch, you know, is caning the batteries. But it's all right. It's not terrible. It's... It's just all right, run of, run of the mill, really. Also, the USB port on the bottom is for firmware upgrade only, which we've said before. But that is important here because there's going to be no sort of like emergency top up of those 18650s. Yeah, no pass through power, so you can't you know, run out and quickly plug it into your car while you're driving. So, yeah, firmware only. Moving into the sensitive area of. Uh, battery cover and security mm. we go to this guy over here okay so trying to be positive once the battery covers on uh, it, it's great you know it's nice and secure it's absolutely not a problem it's perfect the battery's just sitting there you don't have to worry about the battery door it doesn't rattle neither do the buttons you know, there's no rattle this is, is a nice solid unit once it's together that's really good however and we saw this coming right when you try and fit the batteries, to slide it on, you've just got to get it in the right place and slide it. And more often than not, it wants to go in twisted and then it kind of gets stuck and you have to force it out and bend your thumbnail back. And it's a pain in the fucking ass. I am not a fan of this at all. It's great when it's on, but it's just changing batteries. I'm just like, oh, fucking, I've got to charge them again. If this had USB charging, even if it was shit for the batteries, I would leave the batteries in there. As well as that, yeah, the battery indicators to say which way round the batteries go. The first time I got it off Tony, I was, I was, yeah, that's fine, they're going that way. That was great. Next time I were to put them in, I was like putting them in, I'm like, that's the plot. How are they in the wrong way round now? It's, they've got these tiny little indicators. This day and age, especially after seeing the cuboid, where it's so clearly labelled, and even down on the terminals, it's just labelled clearly. This is just like fucking, might as well be like, you know, a puzzle, you know, to, to fit it. it. It's not clear at all. I, I'm probably making a big deal out of nothing, but it, it really annoyed me. The battery door refitting annoyed me. Fitting the batteries in annoyed me. And where my batteries have got a little bit thicker wraps, one of them always wants to get stuck in there, so you end up having to whack it out, which is not what you want to do with a new mod, really. So, yeah, not a fan. Can I chime in now? Or... Yeah, go for uh, it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to come to its rescue. It, it is just poorly designed. Uh, Smoke, you, you've done a bad thing here. Very, very bad. And if I find you, I'm going to hurt you. Um, it could have been so easily solved with like a hinge on one side of it, you know. E even because it comes off in your hand, you probably saw it in the up close, I can't remember, it was a few days ago that I filmed it now, but it's got a magnet on one side, so it will actually slide in. With no batteries in there, it does that perfectly smooth, the, the action is lovely. You put two 18650s in there, and remember they've got springs at the bottom, so they're sticking up proud. You've, you've got a really 
fight to get it in there. And I think after a while, it's probably going to start pulling your battery wraps off. Yeah, and, and while we're down at the battery door area, I would have personally liked to have seen a little bit more venting. There's like eight tiny holes, four for each battery. Uh, they're not really adequate. Obviously, it's a protected unit, so hopefully you will never need them. But at the same time, if you do, they're not going to be too much use. So let's move on to uh, style now. <sighs> what can we say? It's fairly plain. It, it's rather unimaginative. It's been done before. Yeah. This this sort of style. I mean, we saw it with the the Smoke M80, and and that was a long time ago. I had a Smock M80 when they first came out. It's still going strong. You saw it in the video earlier. I did a compare between this and the um, R80, I think, I hope. If I haven't, I'm going to cut this bit, so that's all good. Um, it's got some colour options going for it. You've got the black, the white, the... Red, the grey. Is it grey or is it silver? I th yeah, oh, it's all the same. I don't you call it what you want. Grey and silver are the fucking same. If no, grey is grey. Silver is uh, metallic grey. Is, the the is iStick silver. temperature control 100 watt was supposed to be silver. I unboxed it. It was grey. This was supposed to be silver. I unboxed it. And it's fucking white now. Which again is probably just me, you know, clicking the wrong fucking button. But hey. It is what it is. Uh, it's it's not all bad. Like I said, it's got the colour options going for it. It looks smart, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, uh, the only thing it's got going in its defence, where it's quite plain and quite boring, it does look fairly smart. It looks like a business-like device, you know? It's sort of borderline mm. hip flask. It's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just plain. It looks pretty cool with white and a white atty on there. Mark Thorley was like going on about white stuff quite a while ago. He was buying everything in white. And I kind of see the attraction now after having this big white mod. But yeah, the styling, they have not taken any risks. They've just sort of gone with what they know and hope people like it. It'll do. Speaking of this, though, because let's talk about warranty. Okay, so for the device, it's got six months. That's and pretty awesome. That's it. Yeah, I mean, it's got to cover the standard stuff. So you break it, you bought it, but any sort of manufacturing defects, they'll be covered for six months. I'll tell you what, six months is actually pretty awesome. It's, yeah. it's better than the month or, or three months that, that a lot of places offer. Or none. Or, some or, come with or yeah, you know, you open the box and there's actually nothing in there about warranty. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's your, that. your problem now. Yeah. Uh, what they do say in the manual is that um, the, the six-month warranty is just for def defects with the actual product. So actual manufacturing defects as opposed to you dropping it on the floor which is okay because you know some of us do <coughs> drop some <coughs> things you did it tonight they're blaming me threw it on the floor tonight in terms of durability it survived one throw on on the floor so yeah it's doing good Right, okay, we've come to that special point in the show where we're going to sum up for you by way of pros and cons. As always, we will start with the cons, so we end on that high. First con on the list. Battery door. Yep, fucking biggest con on the list. It is horrible. Once the batteries are in, it's fine, but that battery door is a pain in the balls. I will preface this, although we've already started, this is going to sound like there's a lot of cons on here. It's only because we sort of like extensively test these products. So we go through it, we find everything that, that there is to find so that we found it and we give it to you how, how we found it. Yeah, I mean, you may look at some of these cons and think, oh, I don't care about that. And that's exactly it. You just know what you're getting for your money. So next up on the cons list, this has got one of them. It's got two amazing features. You know, it's got a built-in puff counter, which, which is world-changing. You know, everyone uses that. If you don't use that, you're probably normal. Um, and the other amazing feature it's got, when you lock the device, yeah, when you go to press it, it tells you what the date and time is. That's really cool because you know I, I don't have a phone that tells me that anyway. That, that's irrespective. This is what the con is. So you have to go into the menu and manually set the date and time. And Tony dutifully did that as soon as he got the device. I took batteries out to charge it and lo and behold, you've got to set the date and time again. There's no USB charging in this. Every single time you take the batteries out, you will need to reset the date and time or you will just be constantly getting annoyed with it. Why? It's, who needs the time on a mod? 
playing devil's advocate, the flip side to this is probably it's the same chip that a lot of I mean the 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 old Smoke M80 uh, M80 did this as well, uh, but that was had a built-in battery, so it would work. So they'd probably just reuse the same chip. And with a firmware update, we can easily turn that off. Next up for you is got to be lack of style. Yeah, avant-garde. This is not, but yeah, it is what it is. You'll know whether you like it from looking at the picture. Next up is going to be the fact that the atties don't always screw down. Um, this is almost a prawn, you know, where it's, it's just one of those things, um, but worth mentioning. Next up for you has got to be the screen size of the device. I mean, this is still the same screen size as uh, the, the old M80. I know we keep comparing it to the M80, but it, it is an accurate comparison, seeing as the x 2 was a completely different beast. Going back to the screen, yes, it's still the same size. They could fit a bigger screen size in there. It, it might cost them a few pence extra, but they could charge a bit extra for it then. So next up on the cons list is going to be, heading back to the batteries, uh, is the plus and minus identification on the bottom, or lack thereof. Could have been done a lot better. Especially when you've got things like the Cuboid come out that completely nail it. When you go back to something like this, it feels like a jump back in time. And while we're still in that neck of the woods, finally for the cons, it is... Yeah, so... I was like checking what was going on with the batteries and I found that covering the positive terminal on the inside was half of the quality control sticker. I Ron Ick. I mean, what the fuck? Like quality control is not been done. Ugh. Just so near but yet so far. It's always been an inherent problem out, out of China that quality control is, is little as opposed to none. Yeah, I mean, quality control's been done. That's good. Quality control sticker's been put somewhere fucking stupid. That's not so good. There's oh, enough well. ragging on it. Let's shift on over to the pros. So first up for the pros is going to be the fact that this is really lightweight. The plastic, which seems fairly tough. It survived a drop. Um, you know, it, it just makes the unit really lightweight. Next pro for you guys has got to be the uh, firmware upgrade. Uh, it just shows that the company is willing to invest in a device and... Uh, make it better for us yep hopefully they'll turn that time function off next up is temp control this is really good implementation of temp control all the settings out of the box work really good to how i like them and uh, if they're not how you like them you've got adjustable tcr well we're on tcr it's good that it's included on the main screen as opposed to one of these functions where you have to turn it off and then hold two buttons together and then stand you know, on one foot yeah, it's yeah. Like hop put your left foot in and, and shit like that you know, it's just great to have it all on one line and be, be able to go straight in there from the main menu slide it straight it's in just, just oh and lastly for the pros list is the price. This is a fairly keenly priced device where we've seen it quite commonly around the £35 mark in the UK and even cheaper out of China. Try saying that two times drunk. Okay guys, that kind of brings us to the end of where we want to be with this review for the uh, Smok R200. Smoke. Smoke, Smok. I, I, I started saying it wrong ages ago i don't think i'm ever going to get it right like they didn't spell it right it's their own fault i can't be held responsible for that summing up for this device it's not all bad it, it's it's an adequate device that, that will do 200 watts for you it's fairly inexpensive it will do what it says on the tin it's got a few faults i hope we've we've told you about them and and but put to bed any sort of fears you might have about it if we had to sum it up in one word it probably business like this is sort of like the business end of uh, vaping so yeah it'll do that'll do pig that'll do so anyway guys we hope you liked what you've seen and what we're doing for you in the review if we do please don't be afraid to drop us a like and do the whole subscribe thing and tell pets because we're all about telling pets Similarly, if you've got any questions about this device, hit us up in the comments below. Or if you've got any questions or comments about anything, you can hit us up in the comments here or over on the social medias. Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and UK Vaping Forum on Facebook where we're quite active and very chatty. So guys, thank you for watching Smog Vlog and we'll see you next time.
moving it and we've just focused it and I'm now we're recording. I'm not fucking moving it anywhere. It's still... Yeah, that'll do. Hi. I'm looking at the thing. Oh, we're recording. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we're pro. Did I leave my... um Penis. In 1970 something. Um, cool. Right, let's, let's do some recording before we. That's a fucking loot leak. Let me get my box. Uh-huh. See. You know what I've been doing with that, don't you? Right. Ready? Yeah. <coughs> Wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just thought, what if the sound's not right on the right thing I hadn't checked? <laughs> it's all good. If you say so. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Excellent. Not yet. No, I'm I am get... I need to do my wordy bit. I know, I was just and getting... And then my... we both... I'm getting my angles sorted. You're getting all ahead of yourself. Come on. <clears throat> <laughs> why, why have you got a beak? You did all that fucking weird shit over there. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't have a beak. You were like, mm, the angle of my beak. Yeah. <laughs> if we're quite fucking done. <laughs> Probably not. Ah, oh, brilliant. Because I'm going to waffle. Um, cool. Ready for some waffle? Get your maple syrup ready. Yeah. you got an order of waffle coming. Uh, so that's kind of it. Our review of the Smock R200. No, it's not. That's how. Because, you know, apparently we're not very quick. Oh, I'm very quick. <laughs> Lots of women will attest. A whole string of women. <laughs> There's no women. <laughs> I'm not. No. 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 <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> what the hell is oh, he banging on the about? The penny dropper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I haven't slept. Um, yeah, Not because so, of me. So Not... I said about the. Do you want to ask me about this? Absolutely. Do you want to hold it? And the mod. <laughs> 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 And it's the same designs, mate. It's keep po- po- popping out. <laughs> Poking out. <laughs> Sorry, there's all that talk about Freud, Freud, Freudian there. slip. Yeah. <laughs> You're just desperate to poke it in somewhere now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he heard his name. <laughs> this isn't great. I just obviously oh. ordered the wrong fucking thing. Are we leaving that in, or shall I redo <laughs> that? <laughs> you might need to redo it. <laughs> This is what happens when you drink fizzy pop. <coughs> Ready? Yep. <coughs> They're not words. Nothing fucking gets past you. <laughs> I'm helping. You must have your deer stalker on again. I need to talk to you about that later. But Oh shit. Which, if you've been playing our Tony saying fuck drinking game. (laughs) 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 I haven't been very sweary this episode at all. I think it's been me, hasn't it? It has. That fucking battery deal. I'll I'll, I'll give it a quick sum up. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay, you look pretty. <laughs> Both took an intake of breath yeah, at the same time. <laughs> Alright, do you want to say the last bit? Well, that's all for now. That's all, folks.